Hello, everybody, and welcome to Crochet, a Canadian crochet podcast. I'm your hostess, Claudia. Thank you so much for joining me today. I don't know what like this was all about. So anyway, uh, my name is Claudia. I herald from the base of the Rocky Mountains in southern Alberta, Canada, and I love to crochet. Let's get started. Today, I'm going to start with what I have finished uh, because I love that. So I'm wearing one of my finished projects. It is the poncho. It is that ball of yarn that I had been holding and ripping out and putting back together and buying more of and all of that. And I finally completed a project and this is all that's left. For this project I used, and I'm sure you're tired of hearing about it, but if this is your first time, you don't know what yarn this is. So this is the Loops and Threads a perfect pair sock yarn from Michaels and the color is called walk like a man which I don't know I kind of liked it I thought it was funny at the time um, but yeah I really I really liked this yarn so you can see it's pretty springy like this and the weight of this is actually uh, pretty considerable I was really surprised once it was all worked up that dog is drinking water like I say, is it really a podcast episode if I don't have like animals making noise in the background? Anyway, I apologize. Let's get at it. Um, so yeah, this is a lot heavier than I was anticipating. I'm not, it's not heavy like a blanket feels, but when I'm, when I'm holding it and folding it and putting it away, um, I, I notice it. It's a noticeable feeling, but when I'm wearing it, it seems to drape nicely and I don't really feel it. So this is a summertime poncho. You will notice if you're a regular watcher and if not, I'll explain. Uh, my summertime poncho here, see, it is much shorter. My wintertime ponchos, I like to have them go to the wrist and then they'll go to about mid-shin when I'm standing up. And this one is, I'm gonna, I don't know. It's just, it's like mid, mid-thigh. Mid-quad if you're a muscular person. Um, so yeah, that's that's where it lays on this. Uh, it's granny square almost completely the entire way. Um, and the back and the front are noticeable. I finished it off with several rows, I think about five, four or five rows of linen or moss stitch, depending on what you like to call it. And I think this has just turned out very, very nicely. So I really like it. I'll show you the back. I'm not gonna take it off because the shirt I'm wearing underneath here is not video appropriate. This one, again, I did the, um, oh, I didn't put that end in, look at that. I feel like that's the story of my life, so I still have to put that in. But again, remember it's for me, so I don't really, I don't really care. Anywho, um, so you can see that the color changes down the center, which is not like a traditional granny stripe. Uh, if yes, I have, I had done it traditional. Which way would it have gone? I'm just checking here real quick. It would have gone like it would. I would have the seam that would run like this. It would have run across the side like that. Um, which for some yarns is totally fine, but this one, because the color changes so rapidly, I didn't want the seam to be noticeable on the side. Um, the seam, I call that the wandering seam. It's not really a wandering seam. But the seam that goes like this is present on my winter poncho. Uh, but again, that one, the color change isn't as noticeable as on this one. So that's why I did it like this. So yes, there you go. I am happy. It is ready for summertime. It is nice and stretchy and the yarn itself is like not cooling but it feels cool and I think that's because it's this, the uh, sock yarn. So I would highly recommend if you have the patience and you don't have issues with your hands to um, yeah to try out the sock yarn. I used four of the perfect pair balls for this. Um, I can't remember if they were all the same color weight or all the same dye lot or not. Probably not because I think I picked them up at completely random times during the initial purchasing of them. Um, but I don't think it's noticeable that they wouldn't match. Like, I don't really notice. I wanted it all to be like different colors. And my husband, he's so funny, he, he doesn't really like this outfit. So I bought myself a dress recently and it's, so this brown color here, um, it's like a, sort of like a mustardy color, and this is more copper. It's really, really hard for me to try to photograph granny stripes. But that brown color, so this is a little bit more rusty than the color of the dress. But these colors go really, really well with the dress, and I really, really like it. So I wear this with the dress, and my husband's like, you look like an old hippie, and I'm like, mission accomplished, that's what I want. So I finished this. The next thing that I finished, it's right here, this one was fun to make. Very rattly today. Um, all right, let's get started. I did 
didn't, I didn't even show this to you guys last week because when I was recording live, was I working on this? I was, sorry, I was trying to think. <laughs> oh, story of my life. I was working on this during my live, but I didn't, the week before, this was not even like a glint in my eye about being a project on the horizon. I just randomly started, I think, probably on Wednesday or Thursday, two weeks ago. Yeah, that sounds about right because I was, I finished it on Saturday, like this past Saturday that I just had. So I made this little short sleeved cardigan, it's covered in hair, of course. Um, so I've worn it out a few times. This is the back. It's just like a standard, it's a standard square neck, uh, square yoke neck um, cardigan with half, or this is front loop double crochet and regular double crochet. So the back and the inside and the outside don't match. So this is what the inside looks like and then you can tell. Um, and then the body of it on the front panel and the back panel is regular double crochet. And then the sleeves, they were supposed to be a V-stitch, but it looks more like a feather stitch. But I just went with it because I liked how it looked. I just wanted something that was um, similar in height, but not necessarily a double crochet, just for a little bit of interest's sake. And I think it's it's really, really pretty how it ended up. And I finished those up as well, the cuffs on there. And then on the front part... I have, this is, you'll see this is odd. I have kind of two sets of buttonholes and I had a big long string that I was dangling out there. So I made the front of this, actually, okay, I need to back up a little bit. This can be worn this way because it's roughly the same size this way, or you can flip it around. I can flip it around and wear it this way, like a regular, like mini sweater. Um, and the thing that is unique about this is I suppose if I had tons of cufflinks I could cufflink this together at the front because it's like this but I made this eye cord which I've never made an eye cord before and this turned out really really well so I like it um I would like I think to make bracelets out of it so I'm going to use not out of it this uh where did I put that oh sorry that little leftover bit of the yarn that I made for with this I'm going to try to make uh, our cord with this and then um, make a bracelet with this. So I think that would be fun. Anyway, that's totally a digression. Anyway, I made this to go into the holes so that it is a, um, I keep wanting to say lace front. That is not the word at all. What is the word I'm trying to say? Corset, there we go. Oh my goodness, that took a while. Corset style. So, and, and then again, um, I can lace it kind of any way that I want so I could have the bars straight across like this. I really love tying my running shoes different ways, so I know lots of different ways to like have the laces appear. Or if you want to be fancy, I could do like, it would, would have an X and then nothing and then X and then yada yada yada, things like that. And then tie it at the very, very bottom and then you're good to go. Or you could just wear it open like that, which I have also done. So I wore this out to, I wore it to church and I wore it to grocery shopping and for the rest of that same day. Something looks funny here now that I'm looking at it. That's okay. Um, but yes, and what did I use for this? I have, I don't have that exact label, but I have a similar, which we'll get into when we talk about what I'm using. It is the Bernat Softy Baby, that's right, um, in white. That's right, we talked about that last time. So I had a ton left over because I really, I really underestimated how far this yarn was going to go. but. Um, I have washed this already as well, and it seems to have washed really well. The only thing that I was noticing is that when I was getting started, because I didn't really know what I was doing with it initially, is I was frogging. I would do a few rows, see what it looked like, hold it up, and then I frog it and then put it back together. And the repeated frogging, I felt it really, it really started to wear the fibers down um, really quickly. You can't see on here at all where that is which is nice once it's worked up because I think that would look terrible if you had like this little band of like really fuzzy stuff and the rest was like pristine so it all like it all looks basically the same to me um which which is good that's why I'm at. um and yeah just wash hang dry it is 100% acrylic I believe yeah 100% acrylic it is considered light so it's size three um, and it's called for a four millimeter hook, but I use my 3.75 just because I like the feeling of that. And um, that was, it was working up really nicely. So that was my little cardigan. That is what I finished. Before I get into the whip portion of this, um, I have a little bit of 
stuff to say. So you can see this ball looks kind of funny. It shouldn't look like that. And so does this one. Because I was out of the house for, oh gosh, four hours, five hours maybe. And when I got home, my husband, had to, he had to hold me. Not hold me, but he just took my shoulders and he says, Claudia, the puppy got into your yarn. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, and I was thinking she got into, where is it? This? No, 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 no. She got into both this ball and this ball. This ball didn't have anything attached to it. This ball did. Made an absolutely horrific mess. So I spent, oh gosh, probably an hour and a half detangling both of these from each other. And they were just like, it's just, she, she is a ripper. Like that's, she likes, she's the kind of dog, she likes to hold stuff down and then rip it. So I have found some toys that are good for ripping dogs, which I know that sounds really funny, but that, that's what she is. She's a ripper. Um, to hopefully prevent that from happening in the future. Um, I didn't get mad at her because I'm sure she was just bored or something, but I wasn't happy with her. So every time she came around my yarn, I told her to leave it. So hopefully that instilled something in her. I don't know. We'll see. But that's what happened with these. Now we'll get into the actual work in progress. I am making myself a, uh, I call them a boho cardigan. I am using, gosh, this is full of hair too. Oh, I know why, because I found them sleeping on this. So I know that they like it if they're sleeping on it, even when it's this big. So I'm continuing to use the, the Bernat Softy Baby, uh, Baby Sport yarn, whatever it's called, um, as the white sweater. And I'm going with this. So I started out making a, I, I think this was just called a Mandala Granny Square, maybe? I can't remember. I'll find the pattern and link it in the description box below, which I would like to say, I do that for everything that I can remember to find. And um, if you visit these videos later, I will add things kind of as I find them uh, in the description box, or I will pin a comment. I don't do that as often, but um, I've seen some other people do this, and I misread part of the pattern, which was okay, um, right here. So I did treble crochets here instead of double crochets, but this turned out, I absolutely love it. I think that the center part is so pretty. So it's going to be this, whoops, it's going to be this shade. My husband is sanding something, if you can hear what sounds like terrible bees in the background. It's going to stay this shape, and then, so I'm going to make it a big, big, I want, it, it's going to be rectangular shaped. It's going to start out, start out rectangle, and then I'm going to move it to this shape, and then, uh, like, kind of once it's big-ish enough, um, at the top here, I will be making it rectangular around that way. I know how I'm going to do it. I can't explain it very well. I know how it's going to go in my head. It'll, it'll be fine. And then um, I'm going to put, this one's going to have a collar. I'm going to have this one for, I want this one to be able to be multi-season. Um, I have one that I don't think I've ever showed it to you guys because I think it's been living at my office for, I don't even know how long, probably three years, probably since I started. Um, the original boho cardigan that I ever made that I really, really love. I want similar style, but uh, more seasonally appropriate throughout the calendar year because the one that I have at the office is, it's best for winter because I made it out of, it was a Karen cake, I believe, and some kind of cake, anyway, self-striping is absolutely stunning in my opinion. It's purple and orange and it's really like pretty, like really like deep coral um, that I, I love. Anyway, I love the colors. I love everything about it but it is decidedly for winter. So I get really, really hot in it. I don't use it all that often, but there are a few places within the building where I work that it's hot in our office because we have, we have three windows um, and the windows make up the entire one wall of our office and we get the afternoon sun every day. Anyhow, um, we, so we get that and so I don't often have it for that, but if I know that we're going to have a meeting, let's say someplace that's one of the colder places, then I will take it with me because it's perfect for that, but it's not great for that. And I want to be able to have this more as like, this makes me sound super like egotistical and I apologize. I want this to be more like a fashionable one than a purposeful one. Cause I don't have a lot of just, I really like things that have a purpose. So I, I don't like, I, most of my clothes, like I can wear them with tons of other clothes and I love gifts too that, Everybody laughs at me, but my husband, one year, he bought me a Dyson vacuum cleaner, and I was so, so excited because I love stuff like that, like, and I've gotten blenders and things, and people are like, oh, so-and-so is going in the doghouse, and I'm like, no, 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 she wanted that, like, 
I specifically asked for that. So, uh, no, I love things that are purposeful, multi-use, all of that. I'm terribly sorry. My husband interrupted me and I can't remember what I was saying. So we're just going to move ahead with what's going on. The next thing I am making is I'm making another, this is a gift for someone. Um, I'm not saying who, they don't know it's coming. It's a bit of a surprise for them. So it is a triangle wrap shawl in granny stripe using this yarn. I have three, three balls of this. Yes, three. Um, this is, again, this is the Burnett's, this is the Stripes Baby. And the color is called, oh, Sour Candy. I feel like that's very appropriate. Hopefully this focuses. And, oh, it says tested for harmful substances, limited time only. I purchased this at Michael's. It is regular $14.99 Canadian for 547 meters, which is just over half a kilometer of yarn, which is a lot. Um, and it says 598 grams. Uh, so this is 250 grams in here. That's a big ball for such an amount. Anyway. I'm just chatting to myself now. Anyway, um, where was I going with this? Oh, right. Um, they had a sale. What was it? 25% off select. It was mostly Burnett yarns and a few Karen, unless Karen is Burnett and I just have been dumb all this time. That's possible. Um, that it was 25% off, but then when I went and scanned it, it was six bucks. So that is not 25% off of that price. So that's why I purchased three. So I would have a good amount. And then if I have a semi-significant, which I like, um, I will make an accompanying toque for this, not a granny square toque. Actually, maybe I will make a granny stripe toque. I've never done that before. With a half double crochet back post uh, ribbed. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So that'll be fun. The label calls for a four millimeter hook. And like I said, for the cardigan, I used a 3.75 to work that up. For this, I wanted it nice and loose and open and airy. So I am using a six millimeter hook from Susan Bates with the nice pointy head, Thank you. which I like. And yeah, so that's, you can tell like definitely it's like more, it's more springy, it's more drapey. I just, I really, really like drapey things. Um, for accessories and I like I like this to have structure I'll just drop all bits of it all over the floor I like to have the structure for this uh, for clothing for certain things depending how they want it to fit so this has like basically no negative ease or it does have negative ease it has like no ease like I want it on my body because that's what I, I wanted for this specific one I do have um, like looser sweaters and stuff but that's not what I wanted for this one so that's why I used a smaller hook and for this because I want it to be like it just hangs right like so nicely so you can see this hangs and this one it doesn't really hang not not the same way I don't know hopefully you I don't know can you see see what I mean when I'm doing this I don't know I know I know what I mean when you feel it too like within your own hands you can feel that this is just like a bit more robust and this is just a bit less robust. Um, one thing that's interesting about this yarn is, now that I'm thinking about it, I think this might actually have cotton in it because it, fe it feels slightly different than this does. This feels like a lot more slippery and it could just be because of how it's dyed. Um, but yeah, it's like, it's a more slippery yarn and that is a little bit more, like it catches on itself a tiny bit more. It was a little, that one was actually surprisingly hard to frog when I had, was testing out things. And this not so much. Also, I frogged this a few times because I was trying out a different pattern and I ended up really not liking it. Um, so that's why I decided to go with the granny stripe because I thought that would be the best to show off the, the or showcase the color transition variation. They so have abrupt uh, transitions. So uh, it is self-striping, but it is not the self-striping like, it's self-striping like this, but it doesn't fade nicely. Um, it just, it stops and starts a new color which I feel like there's a time and a place for both of those things. So yeah, so I'm making that. This is like barely started. I would say it's like probably 25% finished right now. So I have a ways to go with that and I will be happy to deliver that when it is finished. Needed some more power. I feel like this is this episode's going to be full of a lot of like starts and stops. So if that bothers you, that's great. 
be very Canadian, say sorry, sorry. Okay, so we'll just chat about, oh no, I wanted to touch base, which I hate saying that, so sorry. Um, but I have not worked on my bag and I have not worked on my blanket. Just life has been very unexpected lately and I just really haven't felt like I want to do those kinds of projects. I need some things that are stretching, stretching my ability as well as not stretching them at the same time which the, those two projects are very like, I have to be very, very focused and very oriented in what's happening. Otherwise they go completely sideways. And I don't feel like at the end of the day lately, I have had the mental capacity to be able to engage in those kind of activities. So I just haven't, they're just, they're just sitting in the basement right now. Whereas this, I have to think a little bit, um, but not very much. And then with the, with this, um, I was, because because there's no stitches in here that I, I'm not already adept at using, I really, I just had to count and make sure that my count was right. And then, so then that was kind of like the limited of my, my thinking was just making sure that I counted appropriately. Um, but not that I, have, I wanted, to, I didn't want to have to learn something and practice it and then do it. I just wanted to be able to do something that could take my foundation skills that I already had and to repurpose them. So that's why this is really great for that as well. And now I don't really have to think about this either. It's very similar um, to the granny square or granny stripe um, wrap. Sorry, there we go. Um, some news is that I am selling out my, I have a bunch of prototypes for things that I have made. So I'm selling them now. They're currently listed on Facebook Marketplace, so I'm not, I haven't opened it up to the uh, nor North American market yet. It's very, very local. I'm trying to get rid of, I have several triangle shawls that I am hoping to sell, and I have a few boho cardigans that I've made that I'd like to sell. So I just, I need them. I need them gone at this point. So they are very deeply discounted, more than 50% off. And yeah, I'll keep you all updated about what that looks like. So I do have some interest right now locally um, to obtain these things. And um, if not, if I don't sell them locally, then yeah, absolutely, I will open them up. I have the products like sitting over there right now because some people asked for some extra dimensions and things like that. So um, I'm, look I'm talking to them while I'm talking to you at the same time. Back to you guys maybe so yeah I'm, I just I want to get that stuff cleared out I just don't have space for keeping stock which I it makes me sad because when I really started her vagabond heart I wanted to be able to make a bunch of things and then sell them but that it doesn't seem to really have the uptake that I was thinking and I don't feel that it's priced inappropriately um, I have made some changes with my pricing but I I strongly feel that I have like crochet and couture don't really go together in terms of like haute couture. Like you don't really see a lot of crochet things the way that I make them in haute couture. And I don't, it's, it's, I don't know, this is a very odd conversation for me to be having right now. So I understand that I can't charge like a note couture price. There are people that do, and I love that they can do that. I love that they can make a living from that, and that's amazing. But I have to be slightly more realistic with the clientele that I have access to. Um, and also, I am not, I'm not great at marketing so myself. I'm great at marketing other people, I feel. Um, but marketing myself is, I find very, very difficult and very awkward. So I haven't been able to like get out out there the same way that I was expecting. Anyway, all that being said, I have had actually better uptake on the, I only have one pattern for sale, but the pattern I have for sale right now, I have, it's slow, but it's consistent purchases on that, which is great. And I was not expecting that. I was sort of making that as like, um, just like a nice, or like just like a passive income thing. So. I've really, really had to think, and that's sort of why I've been all over the place in terms of the podcast for the last mm, probably three weeks, if noticed, um, that I'm just like, I'm not prepared for podcasting itself because my mind, like, honestly, my mind has been elsewhere. 
with life things and with what I want to do with crocheting, things like that. So because I've had marginally better success with pattern writing and pattern sales, I think that's where I'm really going to focus my attention instead of trying to build up an inventory of items. So, um, and I haven't decided yet, which I, I need to within honestly the next couple of days, if these items don't sell at all, what am I going to do with them? I don't have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of garments, so it's not like I have a shop's worth of things to move on, but there might be some things that I have to take into consideration. Um, if if this ends up not being a great venture and I end up making just more of the same, there are a few local markets that I could perhaps take and sell the items there, um, knowing that just more eyes will be on them at the time. Um, yeah, because I'm going to get into hating on Instagram right now. So I think I've talked about this before is that I just, I, I don't, I don't use my Instagram to sell because I mean, I, I make the option or I have made in the past the option available because I just wanted to reach as many people as I possibly could. But my reach with the algorithm changes and everything like that has been so abysmal and I've seen such little growth in that, that it's really, it's not a viable channel for me. My best channels have been through YouTube, shockingly, and through um, Ravelry itself. So I feel like it's been really good. Um, my own website, I haven't had a lot of uptake on, which is like, I, I expected that. I'm not upset about that. And I'm aware that that's what happens um, for that. But I am, I don't know, I'm just, I'm trying, I'm trying some different things and trying to get, I like, I want organic growth. I don't just want to go and buy followers and things like that. But um, I just, I want it, to, I want it to be organic. I want it to be people that want to see it. So there's that. Also, the clientele who I would like to reach, I'm not reaching because I don't, I, I'm not, I'm not set up to be facing them specifically, which sounds weird. Again, I know what I'm talking about. I'm more just thinking out loud at this point. So you're, I'm very much Jack Kerouacking it right now. Um, but all, okay, all of that to be said. So I would like to, instead of having physical products, I would really like to focus on having an inventory of patterns. And I was talking a while ago about how, I, I don't think I used the term burnt out, but I, I was talking about how I was feeling maybe a little bit bored with crocheting lately, just because ever since I started this podcast, I've been really, really, I've really felt driven to like produce, 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 produce items. And it's a lot of the same. So I'm just kind of like, mm, kind of like not that into it. And I don't want to feel like that. And I also, I don't, I don't feel like crocheting is my job. It's a hobby. And like, this is a hobby that I'm enjoying doing. Um, but I want to, I want to expand my, I want to expand my repertoire. So, and I think the best way to do that is to crochet things like for myself and for, not for other people, but to the people I want to reach are people who are makers themselves and who appreciate and uh, deserve crochet. And everyone deserves crochet, don't get me wrong, but there are people, and I'm sure you know them in your lives, especially if you're watching this episode, that um, there are people who appreciate the time, the energy, and the cost that goes into crochet, and there are the people that don't. So those people... I feel are the ones, and this is speculation, this is just my opinion, this is, I'm not accusing anybody of anything, this, I'm, this is anecdotal, that's, um, the people who, who don't appreciate crochet the same way are those who would be more inclined to visit Sheen and Target and, what is the other one? There are a few, I shouldn't say a few, there's a lot of fast fashion places now that are offering crochet items at ridiculous prices, if you ask me, and it, Kind of sickens me but those are not the people though that would look at a crochet piece and see that you know like claudia probably spent lots of time making this she did research she you know took the time to choose the yarn she took the time to do the color theory all of that stuff i'm not just handed a palette or anything like that to produce this item for me and that's fine i know that you know, there's loads of things too that I, I don't appreciate the workmanship that goes into them. And 
what's an example of that plant pots for example um yeah like i really love those hand painted hand thrown plant pots but i'm not gonna spend the money on them and i'm sorry that's right now that's just not a priority at our house i would love to get to the place where that is a priority and i can spend some money on those things but but that's and it's again it's not that i don't appreciate that I feel like I've gotten to an age where I appreciate things differently than I did when I was younger. And I feel like, yeah, because you choose to spend your money differently when you're older than when you're younger, like you just become more aware of the supply chain and how things are working out and all of that. So I don't know that now this is getting existential crisis territory, but <laughs> anyway, that is that. So all of that very long story, I'm going to sum it up right now is um, I will be doing custom pieces for anybody who asks, but I'm focusing my attention solely on patterns for those people who are makers as well and targeting that audience. So hopefully that goes well. All right, we're just going to get into the like, this has nothing to do with anything part of this of the episode. Um, so YouTube thinks I'm really interested in the Depp Heard case. Um, and at first I was like, no, YouTube, you don't want to know what you're talking about. And I'm like, YouTube, you know what you're talking about. I listen to, I limit myself. I listen to one like ep episode a day from one particular channel. That's all I listen to. I listen to it on double speed so I can get through it quickly. But I don't even really take in what they're saying. I'm just like, what is this? It's, I, I'm very like abstractly interested in this and I don't know why. I gave up celebrity gossip for Lent in 2007. Oh gosh, that was so long ago because like I was addicted. Granted, I was 2007. I have to think how old I was. That was that was some time ago. It's 18 plus. I was 23 at the time, so I was like totally target demographic for all of that stuff, but I was like this is a taking over. Like I had oh no, they didn't open constantly all day while I was like I had two monitors I had, oh no they didn't and then my work and I was refreshing it every 20 minutes all day long um so yeah so I I took celebrity oh yeah TMZ Perez Hilton I loved all of it anyway I decided cold turkey I was gonna not engage with any of that stuff for Lent and here we are many many years later almost 20 years later yikes 15 years at least um that I haven't been up to date with celebrity gossip at all. So I don't know who any celebrities are. I don't know who anybody's married to. I don't know who anybody's dating. I just found out today that Rihanna is pregnant and she's probably like had the baby already, like to be perfectly honest. But yeah, like I don't know who any of the actors are now. I've hit that age. So I am officially un, what is that? Like unmarketable. They don't want to market to me. Like now I'm at the age where they're like, you really should be thinking about RRSPs and 401ks if I was American and anti-wrinkle cream and I'm like I guess so I'm into those things now oh uh, which dishwasher is the best that's that is my target demographic as I'm being advertised those things also French things all the time but we'll get into that another day so I'm not sure why the algorithm thought I might be interested in this particular case but I guess it's right Spotify's algorithm is also really good because I'm like, oh yeah, I do like that song. And then they're like, oh, you might like this. And I'm like, yes, I do. So good job, YouTube. Waste. I don't waste. I listen to it. I don't just sit and watch it because that would be terrible. Okay. I am, I'm, no one has tagged me because I am not that big that anybody notices to tag me, which is okay, but I feel totally fine just hopping on bad wagons and I am doing the pet peeves and unpopular opinion tag right now and I will tag three people in my first pinned comment in the comments below. So watch for your name in there. I would love if you took part in this. So um, I have written things down so I have notes so I don't forget. And I mean, I could go on and on. I'm such an anal retentive person at the same time who is super flaky. Um, so I have a ton of pet peeves, but I'm just going to talk about three and then one unpopular opinion. But you can do as many unpopular opinions as you want and as many pet peeves as you want. I'm just choosing for brevity's sake to do three and one. So I'll start with my pet peeves. Oh my gosh. I know I see, I'm, I'm reading them after I type them out and I'm like, Ugh, it just like boils my blood. Anyway, willful rudeness is a massive pet peeve of mine. When someone's like, mm, 
when someone says something rude to someone else on purpose, drives me up the wall. I don't care how rude the other person was or how mistreated you feel that you were. Rudeness, willful rudeness is never acceptable. Never, never. I take that back. Willful rudeness is fine when you have like a sexual predator coming at you. But outside of that, if someone at Walmart is rude to you, do you need to be rude back? No. If you have a cashier who treats you what you feel less than stellarly, do you have the right to be rude to them? No. Do you have a server that you don't like? Don't be rude to them. Just because someone is treating you in what you feel is an unfair, unjust, or rude way doesn't give you the right to do that unless you're in danger. Don't be nice if you're in danger. Kick, scratch, bite, claw out eyes, scream, do whatever, kick in a crotch. That's fine. Someone being a human to you? No. The next two go hand in hand, but I'm going to do the third one second and vice versa because one definitely leads into the other. People who are proud of the fact that they don't read, I'm like, cool flex. Like, it is, it is the meme, like weird flex. Okay. But okay. Um, I don't understand this. Like you are proud of the fact that you don't know things. And I'm not trying to be that guy. That's all like, oh, I've read blah, blah, blah. And I do this and I do that. Like I understand reading at large and reading to the extent that I read is not for everybody, but to be proud of the fact that you don't read. Like I've met people who are non-readers because it is a struggle for them because they have ADHD and they just like to sit and read is very, very difficult for them. But though I have not run across one of those people that are like, uh -huh, I have ADHD and I don't read and I'm so good because of that. No, they don't do that. They usually are apologetic that they can't read. And then they explain, I have a really hard time reading a traditional book because you know, it's difficult for me because my brain is all over the place. That is not being prideful that you are not reading, which to me, not reading is also claiming that you're happy that you don't have a good level of education. I'm being a dick. There's loud noises. So yes, have I read all of these books that I have here? The only one I think I haven't read. No, I've read all these. Oh, this one. I haven't read this because this is a kid's book for my kids and it is to find out where the differences are. This is a road trip book. I haven't read this because it doesn't really have words, but I've read lots. I read a lot. I read, I read every single night before I go to bed. And do I think I am better than other people? No, it's just what I do, but I don't, I also don't run around being, like I said, I don't like, oh, I've read and I read every night. Blah, blah, blah. Like if the topic comes up, somebody asks me when last time I read was, I'll be like, well, before I went to bed, what did you read? I will tell what I'm reading. Right now I'm reading Dharma Bumps by Jack Kerouac. If you're interested, it's really weird. I love it. Um, but yeah, pridefulness of uneducatedness. No. Which I feel leads into my second point. We all make typos. We all make mistakes. I feel like I am graceful in that. But those who make chronic grammatical issues in type drives me up the wall. Oh gosh. And I feel like when I'm reading that, I can tell that you don't read books or anything. Like even if you read a magazine, because I am a huge, huge, huge advocate for the fact that if you read like anything, even if you read articles online of, I don't know, what is some terrible website, the onion, a satire, you will still see, they have to have some level of journalism, even in that, um, but it starts to like ingrain in you sentence structure, um, spelling, how to use certain, you know, quotation marks, apostrophes, points of, of, of punctuation, those things. It all leads into that it subliminally goes into your brain, like how these things are formed. And then when it's your turn to output, you're able to do it effectively. One thing that particularly drives me crazy is when people put apostrophe S when that's not the appropriate way to do that. That means it belongs to the thing. So you don't put apostrophe S. And people also struggle to pluralize things, whether it's the IES, apostrophe S, whatever. And I'm, I have such a hard time with that. 
Not that people can't learn, but when people are like older, like myself, and still do this, or are confused there, 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 then I get a little bit of judgy. I get a little bit judgy. Yeah, it's it's that is a pet peeve of mine. I don't okay, I don't judge them, but I'm it annoys me. But I'm not annoyed at the person, I'm annoyed at their output. It's there's a differentiation between I don't get angry at the people because I know that this is a problem that they have that they're not able to solve, but I still am upset that it got to this point. But not at them, at the very specific letters. I'm a weird duck. I apologize. All right. My unpopular opinion is that I cannot describe the level of upset that I have that the Kardashians are on Disney+. Plus. I hate that show so much. I don't judge you if you watch it. I hate it. I hate it so much. It is so stupid. It's not quality. It's not even like good drivel in my opinion. It is so, so dumb. I just, ugh. And every time it comes up as an ad that it's now on Disney+, Plus, it makes me mad. When I see it, when my kids turn on Disney+, Plus, it makes me mad. I'm just like, why? Why do we have to be subjected to this? Why? Again, I don't judge you if you watch it. I watch really dumb stuff as well that you would find dumb. I really like documentaries. I like British murder mysteries. That will be dumb to some people, and I get it. And I'm, again, I'm not judging the specific person. I just can't stand the show. Ugh. And I don't hate the Kardashians. I don't even know them. Like, I don't. I don't know enough about these people to like or dislike them. I am indifferent to them as human beings. I just, the show, I'm just like, Ugh. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope you enjoyed the rambly time we just had. If you like these kind of videos, give them a like, and you can hit the subscribe button. People say smash, smash that subscribe button to subscribe to this channel, and you can hit the bell to get notified every time I upload. I typically upload at 1 p.m. Mountain Time on Wednesdays. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Stay bright, stay beautiful, and follow your vagabond hearts. Bye! We're going to have bloopers because there's several. <laughs> so awkward. I'm going to sneeze. I'm not live, but I am recording podcast right now. Okay. I'm just moving vehicles. Okay. Is it supposed to rain tomorrow? Yes. Oh, I remember. <laughs>